and with her, they even give her her, her own little uh, BB-8. That little, that little <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're talking about the other yeah. chick, yeah. Oh, Isabella. Well, yeah, that, yeah. that rip-off BB-8. Yeah, you like, see? What is you this? see? Not a fucking original <laughs> thought in this goddamn movie. Uh, Look, we ain't gonna hide it. Y'all know we don't like these movies. <laughs> I, I didn't like the first one. Everybody talking about well, the first one was the best. No, it wasn't. I liked uh, the first one. You were a child. No, no, you were a kid. <laughs> yeah, you were a child. I was like 17. <laughs> you were a child. Oh, I was trying to give you an out. <laughs> yeah. No, man. The first one ain't as, ain't as bad as the rest of these. Yeah. Y'all know that. No, you no. know that. <laughs> no, no, I'm telling you right now. Everybody was like me. You just wanted some Transformer shit on the big screen, and you were happy to get it. And you were going to let that one slide. Now we're five movies in, and we need to stop this shit and face these movies what they are. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something with this. Somebody asked me today, they, and I gave it some thought. They said, oh, it's been a long time since y'all done a drunk show. You know, this would be the perfect time. And I thought, you know what? We got some beers back there. We actually have some fine liquor. I think they're gone. Uh, oh, 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 we got, still got the liquor. But the liquor's over there. Oh. And I said, no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I didn't even have caffeine. Because what I'm about to tell you, I don't want any excuses for what I'm saying. I don't want you to say, oh, Corey was drunk. I don't want you to say, oh, he was high off that fiend. Who was <laughs> saying these things? Somebody <laughs> said, I want to be sober and clear-minded to let you know what I'm saying about this movie right here. And another thing, I ain't going to sit up here and drink for this fucking film. I ain't sitting up here letting fucking Transformers last night ruin my health. I ain't letting this shit take any more hours off my life than it already did. <laughs> so you know where I'm coming from right now with this. I'm not going to even bullshit with it. I'm tired of this shit. I'm, t- I'm sick and tired of it. And yet, I'm still fascinated by how stupid this shit can get. It never amazes me how far that stupid ass pit is, how deep it is. Cause I'm gonna tell you something with this. You know, we, uh, we have the, the Transformers in their back and they're doing what they always do. They come in talking about, oh, you know, Earth is my second home, man. These are my peoples. They've been nice to us. We got to save Earth from these asshole Decepticons even though we tear this motherfucker up in every movie. And they're being hunted by the earthlings and they're being <laughs> hunted but yeah no nah, them my homies right there no nah, but they but but they always blow the shit up i don't even know why this thing about love earth and caring and all that kind of shit you don't even see Wit wiki what's his name anymore in there oh that's right Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, they killed that motherfucker <laughs> oh i was thinking about his dad seemed like he was still around no <laughs> no nah, nah, we got you know in the last movie we had <clears throat> We got a uh, uh, Professor Marky Mark, uh, Professor Mark Wahlberg, the inventor from Texas with the Boston accent. <laughs> if that's the least of your worries, then your movie is some shit. Now, with this, let me <laughs> let me just say, my admiration comes in many forms because Michael Bay said, "Y'all know me now. Y'all know what I do." The movie didn't even get past the Paramount logo. Before they start blowing shit up, there were. That's right. Am I lying? Oh God, that's right. There were fireballs being hurled hurled over that mountain right there. Even that mountain was like, God damn, let's get out the way first. (laughs) Shit, you know they they couldn't wait to start blowing shit up in this movie, and they got right into it because (laughs) they wasted no time blowing shit up, and they wasted no time. Getting stupid with the movie. Right from the jump, they tell you, wait a minute, before we get into this sci-fi robot ass-kicking shit right here, mm-hmm. oh, we got we to gotta go back and let you know some untold history about the Decepticons and the Autobots and some other Transformers you probably ain't going to even ever meet. Oh, but they had a hand in things. Oh, you'll meet them. Oh, you, yeah, eventually, <laughs> because they got 10 fucking movies planned. 17, <laughs> sir. Oh, shit. <laughs> Another hour, <laughs> a, few, a few miles off my life. But... The beginning more they say hold on be- be- before transformers there was king arthur <laughs> Guy Richie, yo, yo, that's yeah. what I thought, man. This movie yeah. starts like that. I was like, did we go to the wrong screen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you thought you were only gonna see one King Arthur movie this season? Nope. It, oh. it got, uh, I heard and I read that 
uh, Michael Bay was supposed to direct King Arthur at some point. So I guess he just took oh, this, some props with him. This, this is just him thumbing his nose at it. <laughs> they crammed uh, 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 King Arthur, the, the, the Knights of the Round Table, Excalibur, all that good shit in here, and said, oh, yeah. You know what, King Arthur, he's a bad motherfucker, but he wouldn't be. Anything. He wouldn't have been shit. He wouldn't have been shit without the Transformers. <laughs> hey, man, can I tell you something? Even though it's medieval times, even though they don't have tons of explosives or anything, Michael Bay still found a way to put more explosions in there than swords. They just launching fucking fireballs left and right. Blowing night stuff in there. <laughs> they, they found a way. They blowed up good. They found a way to put them explosions even in medieval times. 400 AD, people. <laughs> yeah. King Arthur's out there fighting these Saxons and they're losing. King Arthur turns around to one of his homies and he says, Damn, man, we could get this shit if Merlin would get here, man. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> you think of- <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's true. It's true. I'm not bullshitting you. Merlin comes rolling in. Merlin played by oh Stanley Tucci. I yep. thought that was him. When Stanley Tucci's like, wait a minute, I'm already in this motherfucker, man. <laughs> I got a picture him confused as hell right now. He's like, I'm in this shit twice. Yeah, they brought him in. They're doing this little comedy thing where Merlin rolls up. He's drunk. He's uh, saying, y'all, nah, he's even talking to the audience like, y'all, 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 y'all know he ain't got no real magic, so I don't know how I'm going to get out this shit. But he said, I'm going to go see this Transformer. going to give me a big-ass stick, and he going to tell me, hey, you know what? Take this shit back to, to, your, to, to, to Arthur and... Borrow my mechanical yeah, dragon. And yeah, and do, yeah, use my dragon, <laughs> my, my robo-dragon, fly that shit out there, and you're going to be good, man. And... What's so crazy about this? Calm down, Gert. No, it's, it's, it's a King Ghidorah dragon. This, 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 this is the first six minutes. So, oh my god! So you you, you 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 can't you can't lose it now. Yeah, this <laughs> this three headed metallic dragon. Oh, sorry, yeah. it's King Ghidra. Yeah, they yeah. say take your shit over to your homie over there. And get on your dragon, and y'all gonna y'all gonna be good. I admire this movie. For what it's doing. And all this shit that they got going on with dragons in this, all this shit is just to ride off the, ride up the success of Game of Thrones. Because they said they got a, they got a, yeah, y'all got a dragon in there, but we got a robot dragon in our shit. <laughs> y'all got three, three dragons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah three headed dragon mm-hmm. right here. This is not, this is not a movie. This is not a script. This is not writing. This is a fucking game. These people are doing these movies just, to, they're laughing at us just to see how long we will take this bullshit. They're seeing how long they can get A-list celebrity actors. How much can they keep paying them to come and appear in bullshit like this? And when we talk about actors, now listen, you know, I love Mark Wahlberg. I do. Do you? I, I, I do. I really do like Mark Wahlberg, I, I, man. I hope you can explain why. I just think he's, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what everybody hates to hear. I think he'd be fun to have a beer with. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't, I don't have anything against Mark Wahlberg right at, at this moment. Because the thing with Mark Wahlberg, you put him in a movie like this, let him punch a robot, you'd be like, okay, that's that's fucking Mark that's Wahlberg. What he's good yeah, for. that's that's him. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what you do, man. But when you get somebody whose career is, you know, it's, it's let's let's just. Say it for what it is. It's it's coming to an end here. I mean, the man is a, in the twilight years of his life, S- Sir Anthony Hopkins, mm-hmm. the only real knight in this fucking thing. Who in the movie plays a knight? I guess Sir Edmund Burton. And Edmund Burton, he's a guy that has been, <laughs> he's an astronomer that has been studying uh, the stars and transformer history all his life. <laughs> And the the thing with this is that and I'm because it's listen. easier than taking real classes. <laughs> I know that he's out here collecting checks to do this. I get it, but they just. They, they, I mean, I think once he did Thor, he's like, you know, fuck it, fuck it I'm done. What am I doing? <laughs> but Thor, it, Thor really is Shakespeare compared to this. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know, probably to him, even Westworld, he's like. Yeah, a bunch of robots that come to life. Sure, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> sure. Keep being in these movies with robots. <laughs> yeah. He probably thought this was Westworld. You know? <laughs> so that's probably how they got him in this shit. Yeah, this is Westworld. The robots look different. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Just do your line, man. Because in this, it's one thing to have Sir Anthony Hopkins in maybe some, some genre property. 
but still use his talents. Here, they just bring him in for laughs, like he's just a feeble old man. Isn't it? I mean, it's late onset of, um, well, robot dementia. We, we only met when I was a little boy in short pants. I must have been that tall, maybe taller, or maybe shorter, I can't remember. You know this guy? You know, he, they, he might as well be laughing at an old man with dementia. Because that's the way they play him. He just fumbles through the whole movie, stuttering all over his words. I mean, they, they, it, it really does look sad. I mean, you, you, when you look at this, you almost think that he does have dementia. They just brought him into this movie. Like, he, he thinks he's Hannibal Lecter right now. Well, something. I, you don't know where he is. I hate to disagree with you, but a lot of times he's the smartest guy in the movie. He seems to be the one who knows what's going on. That's not hard to do in this movie. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Granted, I'm not fighting you on that. I'm just saying, he seems to be the guy who has the answers. And while he's eccentric, at times where it comes off like he's got dementia other times he's the one who knows all the history there. yeah and, and they give him a few chances to do some action scenes they try to have him run out of a building really quick which uh, <laughs> cool and interesting oh my God. Well, that's, that's, that's just one scene where you're like hurry up we gotta go and he's running and it is the most old man dawdle you've ever seen he, he and, no and, bullshit says quickly and turns around and the camera's doing a slide shot like they're about to run fast and he's like I mean <laughs> <laughs> like he oh, really, and, oh, oh. and as much as we're trying to be respectful of the audience who likes this, that was the that part just broke us. We no. had to laugh out loud. No, <laughs> man. They actually had, they had this dude, he actually did that cartoon old man run. He was doing that running bow legged. But it's one of those things where it was one of those moments where they weren't trying to make a joke out of it. It just was what it was. Yeah. <laughs> like they legit thought he was about to run like 30 something miles an yeah. hour. The old camera's got to move quick. They're like, no, don't do that to him. This moves past him. And it, did. Yeah, it did. It did. It did. <laughs> it's like, man, this is not no stunt, man. Y'all, <laughs> this is Anthony Hopkins. Out of all the fucking effects in this, y'all couldn't dress up an old dude, uh, a young dude to like an old dude. They couldn't and, dress and up one dude. shot. It wasn't even close up. Yeah, y'all <laughs> couldn't. Y'all, out of all the effects with this shit, if you really want to show him, you couldn't dress up like a, a young intern in his clothes and put a CG Anthony Hopkins face on it. I'm going to do this, goddamn it. <laughs> yeah, that's what she wanted. To do. Right, I still got it. If Tom Cruise can do it. So can I. I can do this shit. I got it. I know. Leave me alone. I got it. <laughs> that pussy Tom can do it. So can I. <laughs> like damn. <laughs> I'm over around two feet. Like oh fuck. He didn't even get down. Far. Did you get it? He's <laughs> 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 still trying to breathe the act. <laughs> <laughs> Humble. <B. laughs> <laughs> you kids keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this shit. <laughs> Man, it's it is it, it's it's ridiculous, and I wish I could take it as a comedy. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's more than meets the eye. There's more than meets the eye. The, the, <laughs> well, you wanna fall into that shit, man? But you fell in it, it, though. God damn it! I was gonna tell you to shut up, and at the same time, I was like, no, that's beautiful. You keep going. The Padawan has become the master. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, got me. Oh, <laughs> but the movie. It, it, it's it's one thing to just have a disregard for all things that is filmmaking sometimes, except for the most blatant parts. But it shamelessly comes in and rips off a lot of things in here. And I like the way the movie even says, you know what? We know we ripping shit off. We going to call it out before you can say shit to us. They got somebody in this movie right here that looks like a familiar droid you uh -huh. might recognize from another. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Another gold droid that you might recognize from another sci-fi property. You are needed, sir. Kindly come with me. I'll swap this metal cockroach. Bring it down. Now, you're about to say, man, that ain't nothing but C3, but at that point, another character comes into the movie like, look at this C3PO looking motherfucker right here. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> you know, like, fuck. <laughs> Cog Cogsman is what this uh Is that his name? That's his name. And he is nothing but a C3PO butler who can do some badass shit sometimes and just it was really there just to crack some jokes too. We're talking about shamelessly ripping off things. Did you recognize the part of the movie where it just stopped and became Suicide Squad? <laughs> the part where they go in and they tell None of this makes any sense. It's a war against all the, the, the Transformers, but for some reason, they go to Megatron. They're like, man, we can't catch these Autobots. They, they're hiding and shit. And yeah. They say, look, we hate to do this, but if we can't catch them, you hate, you hate Prime so much. Go find him and his fucking friends. And he's like, I'll do it, but you've got to release my boys. <laughs> and when they do that, they actually introduce them Suicide Squad style. I want my crew. Moa. 
What up, Dallas? <laughs> Dreadbot. Now, what you're missing there is when they introduce them, they oh. do the whole thing where they freeze frame and they have the title card with their name underneath it. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of really shitty things going on with that. First of all, these characters that they're introducing, they're hardly in the movie. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're wiped out 10 minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and one of the things I will say that, that's, that's positive about it, because you go like, all right, do they have the same old Sambo racist characters in here? They do, but it's them, and they get wiped out pretty fast. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah I, I hate that. I, first of all, why they keep these robots, these Decepticons in jail in the first place, I don't know, but you know, because they're supposed to be wiping them out, but for some reason, they got them in robo prison. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense, and they all have like the worst names. Like There was one named like Nitro Zeus. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I, I'm not exaggerating. That motherfucker's name was Nitro Zeus, and then there's a there's a transformer with a green mohawk. So guess what his name is? <laughs> mohawk. mohawk. Yeah. And, and Martin is a little Martin's a little nicer about this shit than I am because with me, he's saying, well, you know, at least I don't have him in there that long. They shouldn't have him in there at, at all. Oh, I agree they with you there. They call hell for having them jive bots in there. And they right. said. Well, it was a writer's strike, but hey, since we don't write this shit, <laughs> who gives a fuck, huh? And they brought this jive talking ass uh, mohawk bot up in here. What up, Dallas? And he's doing this whole thing every time he comes in. What's up, mofos? Y'all crazy? And I was like, <laughs> and they had the nerve to, for one part in the movie where Mark Wahlberg approaches a, a Native American. He says, "What's up, chief?" And the guy's like, "That's racist." And it's like, man, this fucking series has been racist. <laughs> Nitro Zeus? <laughs> Nitro Zeus. That was one of their names. The movie hasn't learned a goddamn thing about the mistakes that is, that is made. Not nothing. But it's just funny because, oh, they had the girls out there thinking, yes, girl power. Oh, they got that. <laughs> they got they got that girl in there. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Isabel Moner, I think is what her name is. Sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. Mm-hmm. And she plays a character in here where they had they put a whole campaign behind this chick, and everybody thought, like, oh, we're going to get some good female representation here. Michael Bay has finally learned. Oh, you poor, stupid people out there. Fight like a girl? Yeah, I fight like a girl. She's hardly in the movie, too. She, <laughs> she is a fucking marketing she campaign. She has about 15 to 20 minutes, like, total in this movie. I mean, she opens it. You see her a bunch in the beginning. But like a lot of things in this movie, uh, it's there and then it's gone. Yep. <laughs> it's just It was really just a marketing tool to get females to come see it because they had a young girl in here and she was too young for Michael Bay to have her pull her ass and titties out. Right, right. Yeah. The, the real star of the movie is a British winner of a, a Megan Fox lookalike contest. Yo, it is. Yeah, and with her, they even give her her, her own little uh, BB-8. That little, that little <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're talking about the other yeah. chick, yeah. Uh, Isabella. Yeah, that, yeah. that rip-off BB-8. Yeah, you like, see? What is you this? see? Not a fucking original thought in this goddamn movie. Oh, uh, BB-8. I was thinking more Earth to Echo. but <laughs> Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. It's all the same shit. I mean, they open this up. They re- Oh, there he is. BBA, she yeah, she got her own little personal scooter right here. My life. Yeah, rip off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and here's the thing, she was too young, and and you know the girl, uh, she is good. The young girl, she's very good in this. I actually wish she had been given more time because she is tough. Well, it starts out with sort of a Stranger Things vibe. Yeah. Yeah, and you're like, all right, well, let's see where they go with this. Well, that's it, 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 <laughs> nowhere. No. <laughs> oh, them things got strange, but not in a good way. When they open up with this, uh, you see kids. You see kids actually going into a a, a stadium here that's uh, desolate and full of debris in there. And you're thinking, okay, we're going to be following a bunch of kids in here, which is great because this is kind of a kid movie or it wants to be right. anyway. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah. We ain't going to do that. Not when we got this fine-ass British girl up here. If you are of legal age, you're going to show some ass. You're going to show a little bit of titty if Michael Bay has anything to say about <laughs> Why it. Why people take me seriously? Shout out your tits is out. It's the middle of class. <laughs> yeah. Get the professor. What are you doing? Man, and it's a, it, I can't even put this on Michael Bay because a lot of movies are doing this. We just saw The Mummy where they put this chick in here look like she's 21 years old mm. and talking about, I'm a professor. Yeah, <laughs> you know, with, with her hair styled yeah. every day. She, she goes out to archaeological <laughs> Eggs. Sure, sweetheart. And, and can't find a man. Yeah, can't find a man. <laughs> yeah, where'd you get your PhD from? Beauty school? <laughs> you know what the fuck is going on here? And it's reading words here. This is uh, 
this is L- uh, Laura Haddock right here, and she plays uh, a, uh, 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 a professor of literature. Who, and they show her with a class. She looks younger than her students in there. I didn't even realize she was a professor of literature. I thought she was like an anthropologist or something because yeah, she knew everything about his. Like she was giving a tour of a museum. Like what does it have to do with books? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, does it even matter? You know, it's like just professor of some shit. Profess, professor of TNA. And, <laughs> you know, the funny thing that I, th- that, that I saw in this is that you're looking at her right there. Now, beautiful woman. And actually, they're trying to give her more more personality than you ever had in Megan with Megan Fox mm-hmm. uh, or uh, my, uh, Mark Wahlberg's daughter in the last movie which was just creepy with her uh, with this though I love it that they tried well, I'm sure Michael Bay was trying hard for a little bit his hand shaking his hand shaking he's just about to pull that dress down he's like cause it's there's a point where she for a Michael Bay movie she's dressed conservatively conservatively for a Michael Bay movie mm-hmm. she gets kidnapped by another transformer, a good transformer, she gets kidnapped in a shirt and some pants. And when they bring her back to Anthony Hopkins' mansion, somehow in this old man's house, she managed with no explanation to go and find a cocktail dress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? Because, well, it shows the cleavage real good. <laughs> I mean, unless Anthony Hopkins was a cross dresser or something, she wouldn't know about it. Like, where did she get this dress? With no explanation, Michael Bay's like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so I'm like, this? Put this on, goddammit. it! Where's that girl we hired? That's her right there. Oh no, 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 no! This will not do. She is there not only to be eye candy, but just to be something for the male to to target his, uh, I guess his his sexual his, tension. his sexual tension towards yeah. by and, and doing it by mostly just insulting her through the whole film. Feelings. What I'm not come here to be insulted by some overeducated Ivy Tower princess. Go. You don't talk about my bitch like that. <laughs> you know this is. And with that scene right there, they don't even explain why this butler robot is so crazy. Why he's so schizophrenic. The only reason why they want to be this schizophrenic is because well, he gets to do physical comedy. Mm-hmm. This movie is a mess, man. Uh, it's it's <laughs> this just from. A, I mean, we talked about the script and the characters and all this other stuff, but just from a story editing technique that nothing makes sense. If you came to see Optimus Prime, God help you, because you don't. You could actually show up to see Optimus Prime, but go see another movie. See that other movie, watch it to the end credits, and then leave that and come back to Transformers, and that's when Optimus Prime will show up. Mm -hmm. I checked my watch. Two hours. Yeah. And then there's stuff in this movie that like doesn't make sense. Like they'll say they'll say this this giant moon sized thing is like some odd light years away, <laughs> but you saw it pick up Optimus Prime by Jupiter, so it's got to be closer than that. And it got here quick. It got here quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is baffling, man. Yeah. God, dude, it Martin, is. Please. Oh well, on, on top of that, with that, yeah, with Cybertron, it drags the moon and says like, <laughs> man, if it reaches Earth, it's going to destroy everything. I'm like. Um, if it touched the moon, that's already going to destroy it's everything gone. on Earth. <laughs> it's throwing our rotation off. And then when it gets to Earth, it kind of lightly touches down. <laughs> it grazes it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, word. <laughs> level event just, just lightly touches down. I don't know, man. If we let it do this for another couple hours, we're going to all be dead. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, it was like that planet came down and just brushed Earth's hair. Like <laughs> Hey, How beautiful. Hey, girl. What's you know I on? love you. <laughs> the moon ain't treating you right. I can treat you right. <laughs> you miss me. <laughs> but okay, so y'all gonna hate me. We already do. I know. I know. Just by me saying you gonna hate me. The thing about this movie is, I understood the plot. It was stupid. It was ridiculous. But I understood what was happening. <laughs> And when they transformed, I could actually see the transformation. It was simple. And when they fought, I could make out who was the good guy and who was the bad guy. Um, some of the action stuff was shot okay. And it's a better King Arthur movie than the entirety of what Guy Ritchie did. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat there going like, I want to hate this because it's, it's terrible. And yet, I keep finding things to 
to give it a pass on is what you do. Well, not give it a pass. To <laughs> just to, just for. reasons to not hate it. Also, I went in thinking it was going to be three hours, and it was only two and a half. Now, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that said, <laughs> I'm not saying that I did like it. <laughs> I don't think it's good at all. Uh, there was just those things that I didn't, I didn't hate. However, every time I thought, maybe I could, maybe I could find an avenue, they would talk. And everything that came out of everybody's mouth was the worst thing possible. But understanding the plot in this makes it even worse. <laughs> This is the most illogical film I have seen in a long time. If there's man. one movie to not understand, it's this one. Because once you really do pick up all the details, I'm telling you, but wait, there's more. If you understand the movie, then they, and believe me, they take time for you to do because they stop to give you a lesson they do. in history. There's a part in this where they explain how in history, Oh, these Autobots and Decepticons, they did more than you thought. I don't even know how they fucking did it. You mean to tell me Bumblebee, he fought the Nazis? He killed Hitler. He, he, killed, he came out like a Volkswagen Beetle or something he killed, <laughs> and he fought fucking Nazis. I'm like, when did he have time to do that shit? Yeah. I, 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 I didn't catch that. Okay, put these fucking uh, robots where you want to. They're trying to start these other franchises anyway. They're talking about putting one in Rome as a spinoff. They're talking to put, about putting one in the 80s. So, you know... Yeah, I'm no bullshit. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's real. Yeah, no, they, I'm not. They, there's this historical photos of how they helped us win World War One and World oh, War Two no. oh, and the Gulf mm -hmm. War, and that's the one right there. Oh, They're gonna Wonder Woman this shit. When, yeah, when they actually went to a room and said, "But hold on, you think Bumblebee fighting Nazis is crazy? You don't know how much these Transformers have helped history." They go through and they show you some shit that I like. Now wait a minute. But every legend. Has a secret. Frederick Douglass! <laughs> <laughs> He's a transformer! <laughs> Frederick Douglass! No, no, no. Aut uh, uh, yeah, Autobots freed the slaves. Yeah, you know, and, and the other and thing. discovered fire. Man, and, and after that, after they showed Frederick Douglass, I bullshit you not. Oh, yeah. They showed Harriet Tubman. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it was like. Harriet Tubman actually was in an Autobot Railroad <laughs> underground. <laughs> well, the shit dude. tells you that the Decepticons <laughs> were slave owners at the time. <laughs> they, whipped, <laughs> they whipped Negro's backs. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. They put an Autobot sticker on the Underground Railroad. Yeah, on the fucking Railroad. Like <laughs> on the Underground Railroad. Thank you, Sammy, for making that for me. I would love to lie and say that picture was in the movie, but it wasn't. <laughs> but, it was. but if it was, would you be surprised I, I doubt it I wouldn't <laughs> an actual underground <laughs> and that is more realistic than after shit in this movie oh people I'll tell you I say these things I can't even hate on this movie no more yeah, I mean, from from the editing aside, where the aspect ratio changes from like the same, <laughs> yo man, <laughs> the, the bars, the bar, <laughs> it would be people in the same room having a conversation, and then the, uh, it'd be shot in IMAX, and it'd be shot in widescreen, and shot in IMAX, and shot in widescreen. <laughs> They're in the same room, and this happens the entire movie. Like it's not, a, there's, I don't think there's a 15 second second break in between the bars going in and out. And then like you saying, like this is a Transformers movie, so the main thing you need of all things is to have Transformers fighting other Transformers. And this is, of all the Transform Transformers movies, has the least amount of Transformers fighting each other. More, There's more of the humans fighting Transformers than they are uh, yeah. Transformers fighting each other. So yeah. you're like, alright, I, I don't know why I'm here because these humans could be doing this in a completely different movie. And they have such a disregard for anything that re resembles a story that they just throw, they just throw villains in there. Uh, Quintessa. Some, uh, some squid floating female uh, transformer who they say is a sorceress but yet never does any kind of powers or any kind of magic. <laughs> you know? no, apparently no, she's no, a yes, god. She, yes, she's she does. of a god. I don't want to say what but she does something very significant at the very beginning. Yeah, but uh, for the most part of the movie she's just there to spout villainous bad dialogue without any background about herself even though one of the things she did she slapped the shit out of Optimus Prime I thought that shit was funny <laughs> <laughs> slapped was all you had sparks coming out of fucking with my inner John bitch I have respect for Michael Bay just as 
from a cinematographer's point of view, just by just throwing shit on the screen, as chaotic as we say it is, it's a lot of stuff up there. And I've always admired Michael Bay for being able to handle that much stuff. It looks, just, just looks insane. And I love the, the, the fights. I've always kind of liked these fights. I know before I've said some of them, they are like the fight between Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. I, was like, I actually thought that was pretty cool. I actually thought it was well staged. As Martin said, you could see it. And, I, and that is a big improvement, mm-hmm. especially since there's a lot more going on. Because I was like, look, if I abandon everything else about these movies, mm-hmm. I want to be able to see the actual robots transform into vehicles and have a fight to where I can understand what's happening. And they have failed with that with so many of these things. I'm like, just, just like the barest minimum thing I'm asking for. And this is the first time I can remember watching it and going like, okay, I can tell exactly what's going on. But with me... You know what I'm saying? I like the action. I have respect for Michael Bay. I, you know, and, and I do. I do. I'm not one of the people who just wants to tear him down. You, nobody does anything like him. You know, whether you like it or not, he is a true auteur. You, when you see a Michael Bay movie, you know it's a Michael Bay movie. Call him damn flag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Explosion. What really gets me is that you have these dramatic moments mixed in with these really goofy moments, yeah. cartoon goofy moments, cartoon humor. You get these action scenes that are really gritty, and then they go back to these characters that are goofy. There's, when I'm saying gritty action, I'm talking about scenes of real adult violence. There are some scenes where they push the PG-13 rating. There are people in the movie who are burning alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, are people who are, you see them impaled and blood is in the movie, and, and, and you see arrows sticking out of them. And then they go back to some shit like, Hound voiced by John Goodman, who's like, hey, everybody, hey, kids, <laughs> look, look at my fro- look at my robot cigar. <laughs> I, 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 I kept thinking I hate his character the most in these movies, but then everybody be always another character would come up and go like, no, you hate me the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, Surprise, you, you bitch. win. <laughs> I, I didn't hate him the most, but I'm like, why does he have a, 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 a robot cigar? Because he's part of the stereotype squad. Him, yeah. him and, the, and the samurai robot. Who's changed. <laughs> who's changed colors and stuff. I'm like, all right, I guess this happened between movies. Sure, yeah. we'll rock with that. And every time they cut and the, to... And the Jason Statham robot. And the Jason Statham robot. And every time they cut to the robot, the uh, uh, Drift is the Asian robot. You know, uh, <laughs> Tokyo Drift. But, they, but they, every time they, they introduce him in a new scene, he's always doing some Zen Asian shit. Shit, standing on his sword. I am one with the force. The force is with me. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Let these robots go in peace. <laughs> yeah, they only miss a stereotype that he's always getting into accidents. <laughs> <laughs> There's adult things happening while goofy stuff is going on. There's a chase in here where the guy, Anthony Hopkins is like, "You didn't have to kill those people." I'm like, <laughs> the, the, the protagonist in this movie, like one of the of all the Transformers movies, one thing you have to be, do is be like, "All right." At least they're not trying to cause, they're causing collateral da- damage, but they're trying to you know, not land on humans. And this one, they are flat out running people off the road. Man. Matter of fact, they're running down people in the streets of London. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, Ooh. um, That's a you didn't want to cut that scene? Yeah. It's just stuff that the humans do. You're just like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, we're trying to escape people. Let's escape in a, in a glass car. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, like, all right, we'll go with that. Um, and then there, there's moments in here, like I said, the editing is out of control. I, don't, I can't think of one line in this movie that wasn't exposition. This movie is the lowest of low sumo bullshits for me. Yes, sir. Martin, look like you may have a dissenting opinion, but I'll go ahead and bounce on this right now. Uh, you know, the, the thing with the... With, with all you Transformers fans out there, and I'm, you know, I, I don't, want, I don't want to go out on a bad note. I mean, because me, I can't speak for us, but me, me and Transformers fans, we're like Autobots and Decepticons. This war just never ends, man. You know, I'm here today. I'm here today to tell you that you fucking won. You know? <laughs> Five movies in, I can't say no more, man. Man, for this, I gotta give this one. some fuck. You. I have to make a new graphic for this shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I hate this fucking movie, man. <laughs> and this film here is something where I think that if there's, if there, if there's going to be 16 more of these, I give up. I, I'm, I, there's going to be a point. I never do this with any other movies, but this just y'all get a pass on this one. We don't, we don't agree. I can't do any more of these. I'm done. Damn. I, yeah, I'm done. So I you going to see the Bumblebee movie? Or? See you next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're going to come out with one probably every year. I don't hate it to the degree that you guys do because I understood it. And there were times when I like make out what was happening. Bumblebee did something that was, like, was kind of cool. And I was like, huh, they should all be doing this. But okay, w- whatever. Uh, and it didn't do, like, like, it wasn't as sexist as the others, 
where the girl wasn't in a midriff or it wasn't where the camera didn't give, a, give her a, a gynecological exam. It was, I mean, yeah, I'm grading completely on a curve with this. Like, <laughs> I mean, you well, are. Every, the whole review is, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Yes. You know, it, yes. It, it, I am pointing that out. I am pointing out the fact that it is not as horrible as I thought it would be. Matter of fact, it doesn't even end up, I don't think it's going to end up on my worst of list at the end of the year. I think, I, but that being said, I still give it a high sum of bullshit. I mean, because everything you guys brought up, it's, it's completely poor filmmaking. Well, you put the sharp object down because I was about to stab you. No, no, no. Is no. that Arthur Fist? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a knife in it. Yeah. <laughs> but even the King Arthur stuff, I'm like, oh, here we go again. But I'm like, you know what? But it didn't turn into a He-Man movie. Sure, it took liberties. <laughs> but at the same time, I saw worse. I looked into the abyss. I saw the face of the devil and walked away from it. And this is not Satan. Yeah, it's, it's a high sum of bullshit. Yeah, I, you know what? And what, what am I talking about? Yeah, my ass is going to be there next year. Yeah, and yeah, yeah it's your that. job. You're going to be there. Yeah, it was, <laughs> do your fucking job. Yeah. Transform to a fucking critic and watch this fucking movie right there. <laughs>